वेलकम बैक टू अनदर मार्केट वीडियो गाइस सो नेक्स्ट आई विल सी यू इज ऑन ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ अप्रिल एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डू समथिंग डिफरेंट दिस काइंड ऑफ एनालिसिस वीडियो आई नॉट डन फॉर अ वाइल एंड बेसिकली व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट्स टुडे यू हैव टू पे अटेंशन टू सर्टन स्पेसिफिक थिंग्स because there are a lot of things that are being talked about so many asset classes moving together whether that is sustainable or not and how you should be positioned this is what uh, we're going to discuss in this particular video so i'll first start off with nifty 500 index you can also refer to the nifty total market index which is a culmination of 750 stocks that is the index i track these days but the historical data in nifty total market index is, is not there for the last 15 20 years that is why while making a video i prefer the nifty uh, 500 index this is blue line that you see is simple 50 day moving average all right and i have all the symbols here that have been talked about a lot in the last 10 15 odd days since we had an update now look what is happening nifty total market index has uh, hit an all time high after a lot of congestion near the 50 dma you look at something like nasdaq nasdaq actually hit an all time high here that is on 1st march when 50 dma was all over here over the last you know 40 odd sessions that is 40 calendar days but i think roughly about 25 uh, trading days nasdaq has done nothing but moved sideways now repeatedly it is testing out 50 dma can you see at this spot so this is a test at 50 dma you know yesterday we had movement on the upside you look at gold gold has been talked about a lot now at 2400 dollars i had updated you about gold in the month of march 2023 when the russia ukraine a war kind of uh, broke out uh, that is somewhere here i had updated about it and now that trade is playing out that is over over a period of time and and that is what usually uh, happens in the market Uh, i think it was uh, this here march 22 that is where i updated about gold that it is it is getting into a long term structure and now the momentum is coming into gold something similar is happening with silver silver nowadays again look at the deviation that is happening away from 50 dma so keep these charts in mind because i'll explain a few things i'll also try and keep the video short because uh, because you know i i'm just making a quick update here to explain what is inter market analysis so silver you know the deviation from 50 dma is something like 16% for gold it is about 11% if you look at nasdaq it's just at 50 dma if you look at nifty 500 the deviation is somewhere around 2.81% if you look at broader market nifty the deviation is at 1.79% for bank nifty the deviation is i'll explain why i'm doing this minus 3.6% that is 3.6% away s&p 500 broadly is about 1.7% away from something like 50 dma now comes the yields part now this is us government bond 10 year yield if you read this book that i'm going to write here intermarket analysis by john murphy don't pick up any other book i think this book here uh, it was written way back in 2013 then i think an edition came out in 2016 if i'm not wrong i don't know whether it has been updated or not but this is bible of intermarket movement of course back then bitcoin was not there so i don't think john murphy has covered bitcoin but you know roughly you will get an idea when bonds go up what happens to stocks similarly a lot of talk about dollar index moving up it is currently about 1.5% up dollar index is heading higher what is going to happen to stocks those kind of things is explained in the book intermarket analysis and if you look at the title of this video it is again about intermarket analysis that is uh, going on and i'll just give you my take on that so dollar index in general when it moves up i'll add one more symbol here which is eem that is the emerging market index 
And if you map out the two, you'll find out that whenever dollar index starts moving up a lot, emerging market index tends to struggle. So a rising dollar, again, I'll use the word in general, is not that great for emerging markets. That includes India. And a falling dollar, along with stability in the US 10-year yield, that is US 10-year government bond, is good for emerging markets. So in this particular scenario, we are seeing 10-year bond is rising, gold is rising, dollar is rising, and broadly you will see equities are holding their structure. NASDAQ is just about near all-time high, same as with S&P 500. Uh, same is with Nifty. In fact, Nifty was at all-time high uh, previous session. That is on Wednesday. Yesterday was on holiday. Uh, if you look at emerging market, nothing special is happening, but it's it's getting close to the 52-week high level. Oil is also rising, which is again a talking point that oil is uh, the rising oil prices are never great for emerging mar market, which is which is again true. Now, how do you position yourself? See, whenever stocks are going to fall, they just fall. Stocks never do this when they are about to fall. Let's say forming a huge range. I think in this particular range, people are trying to figure out what is happening with the macroeconomic data points coming out, inflation, you know, 10-year yield rising, dollar index rising, what happens to stocks? So, a scenario where macroeconomic parameters, that is global mac macroeconomic parameters are not that great, and you find stocks consolidating, that is not bearish for stocks. At least that is what I've seen uh, in my limited experience in the market. Now, in intermarket analysis, John Murphy writes that when dollar index is heading higher, bonds are heading higher, it's very unlikely for stocks to survive. Again, the word is unlikely. He never says it can never happen because there have been periods in history where gold, bond, dollar, and stocks all have gone up. So when you hear this in the mainstream media or, or in some articles that this is a warning sign for equities, I would tell you that article is right. But when they imply that this is going to bring about a nasty correction in the market, that implication is wrong. It's wrong because it's entirely possible. Let me paint a picture for you. It's entirely possible because gold and silver have deviated so much away from 50 DMA and there is so much of recency bias now in these asset classes. It's possible in the next couple of quarters, gold does this while retaining its structure. Silver does this, again, while retaining its structure. Dollar index has seen a sharp movement from 102 to 105. You know, I would be very interested to see if dollar index can take this out. Let me just change the color of it. This particular range out. In the long term, this is nothing but long term consolidation and contraction happening in dollar index. I would like to see what happens here because on a higher time frame chart, let's say on a weekly or a monthly time frame chart, this is what matters for me, this particular line. In between, we can have a retest here. Let's say dollar index goes up to this level, equities consolidate, pull back more, and then it does this again, which would mean this period again would be really good for equities. When you come to US 10 year, of course, it doesn't look great. And if you look at the higher time frame charts, again, what I would be interested is in this level here and also partly this region. I'll give you a reason for it. This could just be another stage that is getting formed on the chart. Now, if this is gonna happen pretty soon, then obviously you're going to see a lot of impact on stocks. But generally in technicals, what you see is such V-shaped recovery that happens, brings about another V-shaped movement. That is just how historically things have moved and it's an entire possibility. So if this picture is, going to be true where something like gold where something like let me change the time frame again silver 10 year yield and something like 
you know, I'll also put in oil here. For oil, again, I'll go back to the higher time frame charts because lower time frames are riddled with volatility. So I would want to see, see, this is a huge supply zone in oil, this particular region. This is nothing but a supply zone. So it's entirely possible in the short term, you know, this happens, but over the next few quarters, again, this happens. All right. So this is a medium term picture that can play out where gold, oil, bonds, and dollar index sees consolidation. Now, this scenario here is not negative for equities. It is actually positive for equities, which is why I bring you back to NASDAQ where it is quietly placed in and around 50 DMA. I'll bring you back to Nifty 500 where it has just made an all-time high and can just see some further consolidation. I'll bring you back to Nifty where something similar is happening. Price has just hit an all-time high and it is just pulling back and consolidating. So broadly, you know, I'm of the opinion that in the very short to medium term, switch to something like daily time frame and just put out 50 DMA on all these asset classes. By the way, before I hit a, a you know, give out a summary of this and move on to other things, I would also like to cover Bitcoin today. Now, Bitcoin is an asset class that I've never been in favor of because for us in India, it's not of much use because of uh, regulation set by RBI and rightly so. And the reason why I don't prefer this asset class is because it's not regulated. Recently, there's been a lot of ETF uh, in this particular asset, which is fine. But again, we don't have access to all those things. But you cannot ignore the fact that there are a lot of people who are betting big on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is taking a lot of money away from equities. So you've got to see the health of Bitcoin also. From a little medium term point of view, you are again seeing, I'll just change the color, a contraction happening in Bitcoin. So basically for me, the way I like to see Bitcoin is a risk on asset class. So what is a risk on asset class? A risk on asset class would be commodities. It would be metals, you know, included in commodities. It would be financials. So on similar line, I would place Bitcoin here that it's a risk on asset class. Whenever people are bullish, have money in the market, they like to bet on instruments that can give them returns. And Bitcoin gives you a lot of return in the short term also. What is risk of asset class where there can be concerns about economy, where there can be concerns about job growth and those kind of things. It is, it is mainly gold, which is considered a safe haven. It is bonds. All right, some, some highly rated corporate bonds also, but I won't go into that, but I hope you get the point. So what is currently happening in the market? So broadly, I'll just mark it as equities. Okay. It's going to be easy to understand. So, so what is currently happening in the market is that both risk on and risk off asset classes are heading higher, which means equities, bonds, gold, silver, Bitcoin, everything is competing for one big pool of money. So I'll write money here. All these asset classes are competing for this particular thing in the box, which is called money. Now, one of these things is going to give way. That is how I have seen it playing out over and over again. A bullish case for equities, which is why you should keep gold, silver, dollar index on your day-to-day -day analysis kind of framework. Put out a simple 50 DMA and see what gold is doing with respect to 50 DMA, what silver is doing with respect to 50 DMA, what bonds are doing with respect to 50 DMA. If you see something like dollar index, bonds, silver and gold, because there is so much of noise and interest and short term bias in this sector. If you see the consolidation beginning, then keep a close eye on NASDAQ. Keep a close eye on Nifty 500. Because after these broader market indices consolidate, then you will see fresh movement on the upside. All right. The thing that I've, I've 
always seen is that when equities have to fall, they just fall. They never consolidate at or near all time high. Okay, so for the time being, let me put it out here that track these asset classes through daily time frame 50 DMA. Risk on and off moving together is not fine. All right. One of these asset classes is going to give way. Now, when I say one of these, I mean risk on can give way or risk off will give way. That is either a sharp correction will come in equities, that is a risk on asset, maybe, you know, other commodities and those kind of things. I don't want to talk about Bitcoin. Or you will see more consolidation and down movement happening or beginning in safe haven asset classes like gold, silver and bonds. If this were to happen, it would be really positive for equities. And the hint would be that these asset classes, that is equities, take Nifty 500, Nifty, Emerging Market Index, NASDAQ, S&P 500, everything would consolidate above 50 DMA. And then you will see a fresh breakout or a fresh movement on the upside. If you're going to wait for everything to fall into place, you'll never be buying here. You'll never be making your watch list here. This is something I've repeated in, in all of my videos. So in this phase, when Nifty was heading lower or Nifty 500 or mid cap micro caps were heading lower here, some ugly corrections were happening in the broader market space. If you haven't built the watch list, you haven't realized gains here. Why it is important, let me tell you. Because when price has moved up from, from this level to this particular level, broadly, the positions that you built here or when price was falling and again showing signs of stabilizing would be easily up depending upon your stock selection between 8 to 15%. In other words, this is cushion. Cushion is important in stock market. Cushion is important in stock market because if equities are going to test out 50 DMA, this is where your cushion will come handy because you won't exit positions just because you will be heading into short term losses. Whereas if you haven't done the work here and you're building the position when anchors and influencers are going gaga about Nifty hitting an all time high here, then by the time price consolidates and pull, pulls back to or closer to 50 DMA, your portfolio would be down minus 5%. So understand what I'm explaining here. That is why in stock market, only those people do well who prepare well when tough phases come in the market. All right. So if we are going to have one more tough phase in the market, let's assume here that do uh, dollar index keeps rising, US 10 year yield keeps rising, gold keeps rising, silver keeps rising. I would keep this point as a trailing stop for positions I have built here. All right. At the worst, this will happen, this will happen, and then this will happen. I'll be out. Now, the best case scenario in which equity guys make a lot of money is with the cushion they have, they will weather out the short term storm till 50 DMA or just below it. When again the recency bias turns against equities, you will see one more move beginning and price moving higher. In the last two episodes that I've done, I have clearly mentioned which sectors to go behind and I've clearly mentioned how to go behind specific stocks in those sectors. I link up both these videos here. All right. But understanding the current global market picture is important in terms of planning. For someone who has cushion, you have to sit quietly and monitor what happens to gold, silver, dollar and something like oil here. Just use 50 DMA, just use daily time frame, nothing will happen. All right. For those who don't have cushion, 
you will have to wait for one more leg of pullback to play out. And this leg of pullback will happen in the short term if dollar keeps rising, US 10-year yield keeps rising, and gold keeps rising. All right, I hope this, this point is clear. So I'll make a couple of more remarks here. So for those who have cushion, you have to track gold, silver, oil, dollar with respect to 50 DMA only. Those who don't have cushion, you will have to rely currently on the mercy of market that gold, silver, oil and dollar index heads higher in the short term so that Nifty, Nasdaq, S&P 500 pull back more, consolidate more and then you get your opportunities to build position the way I've explained in the last two videos. All right. So now I'll just quickly cover what is happening in the US market. There was a lot of noise about inflation data coming in uh, worse than what people were expecting. And you saw, um, you know, day before yesterday when the Indian market was shut, S&P 500 gapping down about 1%, then, then all that um, drama around gift nifty and, and, and that started. See, you have to understand when the inflation data came out somewhere here, S&P 500 in the short term was already doing lower high, lower low kind of structure. And then yesterday you saw the PPI number. So day before yesterday, the CPI numbers came in. Yesterday, the PPI number came in. And then you saw rally developing. Now, in my view, the short term concerns price structure wise is not over. And I don't think it has anything to do with CPI or PPI. It is just that equities currently in the short term is competing with gold, silver, bonds and Bitcoin. Currently, Bitcoin is also not getting a lot of uh, money in the very short term. Why? Because it's it's doing nothing, but it is in a range uh, since past 30 days. So it's it's a contraction that is getting formed. All right. So that is the main reason. But if I have to see structure wise, if I remove everything here, switch to a higher time frame, let's say I go to something like daily time frame, again, remove all the markings. What is happening here? You know, you have to be really, really bearish in life to not see that S&P 500 currently is forming a flat kind of a structure. So if everything, and this is just my hypothesis, I can be clearly wrong here, but if everything that is being spoken about due to rising gold prices, silver prices, commodity prices, oil, a lot of tensions in the Middle East, if everything is so concerning, then I don't think this is the structure that should be formed by an index or by a headline uh, index that is widely tracked. In such scenarios where there are real concerns, you know, price rarely does this. It actually does this. So the structure itself is telling you that, yes, next fortnight or next 20, 30, 40 days is going to be a little challenging for equities. But eventually the rally in gold, silver bonds is going to settle down. And then you have to review why you have to review. Because I'll add the sixth point here itself. You have to review because if you look at the long term charts of gold, silver, bonds and dollar index, it's actually not bearish. And that is why I started the video by saying that equity markets currently are positioned in a very precarious manner. They are positioned in a precarious manner because both risk on risk off assets assets are moving up risk on assets are not falling that much they are consolidating whereas risk off assets are moving up with momentum and higher time frame charts of risk off assets which is the dollar which is uh, bonds which is uh, gold is actually improving by the day that is the structure on higher time frame charts for these risk off assets is improving by the day so again, it's a tough phase and this tough phase will remain. 
but do not forget that it is also an opportunity for all those who have missed out. Equity markets will always climb the wall of worry. This is something you must have heard so many times being uh, you know, repeated on television, which is absolutely true. I'll just do something here. Just give me one second. I also spotted a downward kind of a channel in something like Nifty 50. So it's entirely possible in the short term, you know, dollar heads higher, gold gets more money, silver gets more money, NASDAQ and S&P 500 sees more correction and we get closer to this. So someone like me who participates a lot in index trading also, I'll, I'll only be interested in the index trades now if we hit something like this level. Else, stocks are always there to build your positions and, and to ride the trend. All right. So intermarket analysis by John Murphy. For those of you who have read it and you have doubts, do ask me a question below. And for those of you who have limited understanding about what intermarket analysis is, what happens when gold rises or dollar rises or those kind of things, again, you can post in your questions. I'll, I'll make sure I'll answer them. Please do so on Saturday because uh, that is the day when I'll sit out and answer all the questions. All the questions from previous videos have already been answered. So hopefully this was helpful. Have a great weekend ahead guys. Take care and be safe.